We have another shooting. We're talking about Miss Bryant. Makayla, I think Makaya is her name. Makaya Bryant was shot and killed yesterday, right on the verge of the Chauvin verdict. And it was something that sort of captured a lot of people's attention in the media. And there's already started to say things like, well, hey, Chauvin hasn't even been convicted yet. And already we have another white officer killing another black person. And so the media went into hyperdrive, hyperventilation mode, as they usually do. And we want to break this down because there's a lot going on here. And we're starting to see some people who are part of the power establishment, sort of, you know, it's, it's the people who are part of big think tanks, and they're already starting to craft this narrative that the cop was wrong in this situation, even though if you watch this as we're going to do, well, you can be the judge of this, right? You can tell me whether or not this officer's shooting was legitimate or not. And so we're going to go through this in a little bit of a reverse order. You may have already seen the video in this case, and we're going to play it. We are going to show you the body camera. Now, a little content warning in this segment. Of course, we're talking about a young woman who is 16 years old who's not with us anymore. Uh, she's shot and killed. And so you know, we, we are going to have some imagery. We're going to talk about some of these concepts. I just wanted to forewarn you. When we do get to the body cameras, there are her, her face is blacked out, and the moment of the shooting is clipped out and everything else is pretty blurred. It's pretty well sanitized, but I just want to give you that little bit of a content warning. We're not going to spend a lot of time going through the scene, but we are going to be talking a lot about the reaction. So just be uh, cognizant of that. That is the content warning for the segment. Now, the body camera. This is what we're, uh, let me frame that out a little bit better. We're going to go back through this sort of in real time. We're going to rewind the clock back a little bit and say, well, what happened back at 430 yesterday as this was all unfolding? Because I want to show you sort of the, the timeline, the sequence of events. We had a big issue and then we had a lot of reactions trickling in before even uh, the evidence was out, before the body camera of the shooting was even released. So let's work our way through this. Here we saw yesterday from 10 TV that officers were called to Legion Lane north of Chatterton Road at about 4.30 p.m. for a disturbance, right? And that was right around the same time that the Chauvin verdict was being announced. According to Interim Chief Michael Woods, caller reported females were trying to stab them. Dispatcher tried to obtain more information, but the call was disconnected. Footage released from the police came after the first officer or came from the first officer on scene. In the video, the teen appears to attempt to stab two people with a knife before the officer fires his weapon. What? So that that doesn't sound like that's unjustified, right? That's somebody attacking somebody with a knife. Chief Woods said officers immediately assessed her for injuries, called for a medic and gave her CPR. During this time, an officer can be heard saying she came at her with a knife. The teen was taken to Mount Carmel East in critical condition, where she was later pronounced dead. Unclear whether anyone else was injured. Though police declined to release her name, the mother identified her as Micaiah Bryant. Okay, so uh, interesting spelling, M-A apostrophe K-H-I-A. So I'm going to probably butcher that throughout the show. So Micaiah Bryant. And, you know, this was unfolding yesterday. Then we started to see some reaction. And a lot of this reaction was very similar to what we saw during the Floyd incident. We have uh, somebody, you know, people are posting on Twitter right away. Hey, you know, fly in heaven, baby girl, rest in heaven. The police killed my daughter today in Columbus, Ohio, right? So this person, uh, Paula Bryant, hopped right on Facebook uh, right after it happened. The police killed my daughter today in Columbus, Ohio, right? And uh, Paula Bryant, right? that's, that's mom. So first thing mom does after her daughter is gunned down is get on Facebook. All right. 45 minutes later, here we are. Fly high in heaven, baby girl. Rest in heaven. The police killed my daughter today on Facebook yesterday. Then we see around the scene, a lot of protesters start showing up. So we've got uh, this guy with a bullhorn just ready to rock and roll. Protesters soon convened at the crime scene and called for action after witnesses described what led to the shooting. All right. So everybody's pouring in there now right around the scene. This took place outside of a home. And so we're going to see more of this. Then we have somebody who's basically auditioning now, right? So the media is now showing up. We've got cameras. This is before body cameras are even released or before we even really know what's going on, right? This just happened. It's still light outside. This happened during the, you know, the afternoon, 4.30. It's still light out. Media is there. And this is uh, Micaiah Bryant's aunt, aunt, Hazel Bryant, and she's auditioning, right, for the media. So she's out there now screaming about, they, you know, they shot her, her niece, essentially. And we've got everybody taking pictures. We've got the microphones, media is there. You know, everybody's, she's, she's, she's out there performing. And I, look, that's what it looks like to me. And I know that may sound insensitive, but y your niece was just shot and killed. What are you doing right now? Are you ranting to the media? What are you doing? Like, why are you not with your family? Same situation. Here is the mother who is now giving a statement right after this happened. The police are still there. She was just shot and killed. Like right, like right here, as far as I can tell, 
right? The, the, this is the police vehicles right there. There's crime tape. Mom just kind of walks outside of the house and wants to give a statement. Makaya was named after a male prophet in the Bible. She was a very loving, peaceful little girl. She was 16 years old. She was an honor roll student. And um, Makaya had a motherly nature about her. She promoted peace. And that's something that I want to always be remembered. So, yeah. So, mom, for, you know, daughter just got shot like four times. Uh, mom comes out and says, oh, hey, hey, excuse me, news camera, are you over? Let, let me give you a statement. And the news just runs right over, right in your face. It's a weird thing that, that, that everybody's just so media hungry uh, as, a, as a 16-year-old girl just got shot. I, I, I don't get it. I mean, all right. Then we saw, you know, outside of the police headquarters, crowds forming last night. So everybody's pouring in, right? We've got a new a new shooting. You got everybody's got to go be a part of it and protest. Here are some more people. The whole damn system is something. Can't see what that is, but they're forming a line of shields, right? Right outside the police headquarters. <laughs> So they're screaming, say your name, Micaiah Bryant, say your name, Micaiah Bryant. And it's not just me who was looking at this stuff and saying, this is really weird. There's a strange thing happening right now because everybody is seeming to be piling on this stuff. Now, ordinarily, I expect the media, yes, to go out there and pick a side and then, you know, uh, bloviate for that side until they're blue in the face. But this was sort of a different level. And I want to share with you a, a blog post over from Ala Pundit at, at hotair.com. Uh, very, very, you know, I like to read his stuff. I disagree with him a lot of the time, but he, he's, he's on the money on this one. And he wrote, some media outlets and even senators sure were eager to make the McKay Bryant shooting a story about race, which is exactly what I was noticing. He said, some members of our fair and balanced media didn't wait for details to decide what the Bryant story was really about. And I like how he does this, right? Really about, both of those are capitalized. Really about, like R-A, right? Because that's just what the media does, right? Every single story has an, ul an ulterior motive. On the very day that Chauvin was convicted for the murder during an arrest uh, of Floyd, another incident in which white officers had killed a black girl, a minor no less, had dropped in their lap. Fate had handed them an opportunity to declare that while justice had been done in the Floyd case, unjust police brutality toward African Americans would not only continue, but had already added to its body count before Chauvin had even left the courtroom. The narrative was too good to check, Allah writes. So they didn't. The story was about race first and foremost, they concluded. And so he took some screenshots of this stuff, right, which is something that I like to do here. And he summarized, and here's NPR, says Columbus police shoot and kill black teenage girl. Like, that's a that's a headline, right? Uh, not, not an armed teenage girl, not a teenage girl attacking another girl, not police shoot and kill uh, attacker who was threatening to murder somebody, right? They shoot and kill a black teenage girl. Whoa, what? On the day that Derek Chauvin just got convicted, the police shoot and kill a black teenager girl? It's terrible. Then uh, the Daily Beast does it, right? Columbus police release body camera footage and fatal shooting of black teen. Axios does it. Columbus police officer fatally shoots black teenage girl. Slate does it. Black teenage girl is shot and killed by Columbus police. So does the Washington Post garbage newspaper. Ohio police fatally shoot black teenager girl just before the Chauvin verdict. They are all salivating at this story. Oh my God, this is perfect. Chauvin just got convicted. Some white cop just killed a black teenage girl. Like one after the other. All the blog writers at the Post are ah! salivating over this stuff. Let's go back to Ala Pundit. He says, the Post headline is especially egregious since it was published this morning. Okay, they published this this morning. This one, Ohio police fatally shoot and kill black teenage girl just before Chauvin verdict. They published that today, not yesterday. So they have even less excuse for not viewing the body cam footage before drawing a conclusion. Jerry, uh, Gerald Bayer, according to this person, notes that the Post story never states that Bryant had a knife in her hand even though it's clearly visible in the video. So they're just, they're just flat out lying to you, right? I mean, that's a fact that is obviously evident. We can see it. The Washington Post, which is supposed to be a, a, a newspaper, a legitimate newspaper, don't even mention that. 
They acknowledged that, quote, she lunged at someone and that a knife was found next to her after she fell. But they'll allow, by way of reporting, all they'll allow is that she was trying to stab someone that police claimed that she did. What if I told you that you could wait to report on facts until you verified them? Journalists who have occasion to go back and realize that they have reported some key facts wrong in the heat of a breaking story should have a little more humility in judging people whose jobs involve making graver decisions in less time with no ability to edit their own mistakes later. Isn't that interesting? Right? So, so Dan McLaughlin is saying, Hey, you know, writers get to go back and edit their material. Cops don't. Dan McLaughlin, who's a little more charitable to the press than I'm willing to be, jumping to conclusions about the Bryan shooting wasn't an honest mistake, says Allah, based on having received bad facts. It was a conclusion they eagerly leaped to because they had a storyline they were motivated to push, enough so that they were willingly they were willing to run initially with Bryant's aunt's account of the shooting, even though she didn't witness it herself, right? That was the same woman who I showed you was auditioning earlier out there in front of the media, ranting and raving about what happened. She wasn't even there. Didn't know anything about it. They killed my niece. They shot my niece, blah, blah, blah. She wasn't even there, but the media was there lapping it up, just soaking this all up. So let's get into what actually happened. This is from the uh, interim chief of police, I believe is now giving a press conference and he's going to tell us about the officer, right? He's going to introduce us to the officer. Officer's uh, name is Nicholas, and he's going to identify them so we can use his name. Uh, but I'm going to show you why we're going to blank out this officer's name in a minute, which is not something I traditionally do, but I'm going to show you why we do that. Here is this uh, chief of police now giving us a little bit of background on what happened. The first video we're going to show you is from Officer Nicholas Reardon. Officer Reardon was working a one officer car. He was hired in December of 2019. He's currently assigned to zone two, second shift, and he is the officer that discharged his firearm. All right, so they're, they are identifying him, and you know there are people out there already calling for this guy's head, which is a little bit concerning, of course. But uh, I want to show you, this is the, the video, right? So this is the video of Officer Reardon getting out of his car. Uh, we're not going to watch the whole thing. It's about four minutes, I think. We're going to clip the beginning and end of it. Now, this is where the shooting happens. So content warning, it's coming next. But it is highly edited. So you're not going to see the actual shooting. You are going to hear some profanity. That has not been edited out. And then you're going to see a lot of blurs around. But you're still going to be able to make sense of, this and a couple things I want to point out first and foremost this officer is moving quickly right he gets out of the car this thing is already in motion and you're going to see that this is not just like a two-party fight there are, are several people involved in this and this officer is having to sort of assess the threats extremely quickly you're going to see on the back right or, or, or near the vehicle so let me let me just show you right now before I start playing it so this is officer reared and he's going to be coming around here he's going to be sort of you know pacing around this area coming upon the scene and then you're going to notice a couple things happen very quickly. So somebody's going to sort of fall in the ground over here on the other side of the vehicle, and he's going to sort of assess that quickly. Then somebody lunges up, and this woman here in pink is going to be pressed up against this wall, and then Micaiah is going to be sort of you know in engaging with her in this direction. So the officer is going to run around here, and you're going to see a gentleman, somebody over here, uh, kicking somebody else. So like somebody's running over here and just like throwing a lobbing a kick. And then there's somebody in the background here puts his hands up. And so it's kind of it's kind of mayhem. It's kind of madness. This officer in this entire scene is able to act very quickly. And we're going to break down what happens. We're going to watch this first through and through. Then we're going to go back and we've got a, a, a freeze frame of, of one of the, of, you know, the most important part of everything that we're looking at. So here is the video from Officer Reardon. Once again, content warning. Nobody, nobody dies in this video, right? She dies later at the hospital. We don't see the shooting. You hear it. And uh, all of the, the facial expressions are blanked out. Uh, obviously, she's, you know, uh, not with us anymore. But her face is blanked out for privacy because she is underage. Here is the shooting. All right, so we, we saw that, right, happens very, very quickly. The, I'm not going to play it again, but the, the key one that you want to see, uh, the key frame that comes out is this clip. Okay, there's a knife right there, and this is 
you know, going in the direction of this woman. And you saw that altercation and uh, you know, she, she's she's going to stab her. Right. And she she sort of makes several attempts, you know, starts starts swinging a little bit and she puts her hands up. Now, she's this woman also has a dog in her hands. So she drops the dog, kind of protects herself. And then the shooting happens. And then, of course, Micaiah uh, is hit and then sort of drops to the ground over here. Then we have another video from another body camera from another officer who's walking with the woman in pink. And you're going to hear them sort of walking back to the car. Then you'll hear the woman say, yeah, she came at me with a knife. That off, that other officer stopped her, right? So she's sort of the victim of this assault. And she's saying, no, he's like, she was going to stab me. And he stopped. So the victim here is sort of, you know, agreeing with the idea that this officer essentially saved her life. Let's listen in. With a knife? Yeah, so she, so he got her. Shoot a girl. Uh, she ain't coming at you with no knife. I want to keep fucking camera. All right, one more time. With a knife? Yeah, so she, so he got her. Shoot a girl. All right, so, yeah, so he got her, right? He got her. She was coming at you with a knife. Something happened with that clip. I don't know why. Uh, but, yes, he got her, right? And so the officer already came out. Uh, the, the chief of police came out, identified the officer. It's this guy here. Daily Mail is now, you know, publishing his picture. I'm blocking out his face today. Uh, and traditionally, I don't block out officers' face faces, and that's typically because I'm calling them bad popo, and they deserve the attention. But what we're going to see here is that there are people now calling that this guy is quote next. So there, there are, there are actually people out there who are saying this guy's next, right? We're going to get you next. And so uh, it's almost th threatening. And I've got a screenshot of what that looks like here in a minute. So we're not going to contribute to that, uh, that mob justice, because this, in, in my opinion, was a perfectly lawful shooting. And what we've got here is uh, the officer. And so, you know, they're, they're saying Officer Reardon standing on the scene, shooting and killing Bryant. He's been on the force since December 2019. So, you know, relatively new officer. And, you know, in this picture, it kind of looks like he's got his hand on his gun as we have a woman laying dead here. And he's having a conversation over here, you know, ex explaining to somebody. And if I remove these blocks, you know, it's not a flattering picture. It looks like this guy's just like, yeah, just uh, took care of business over there, right? And, you know, I'm, I'm sh certain that that's not how he feels, but these pictures are, you know, are well, we saw what, what the George Floyd picture looked like. We saw what that did and the power there and how these pictures and videos and images all get manipulated. And so they were you know, kind of doing that here. He kind of looks like he's just posted up and we see you know feet from a dead person lying right there as he's looking off into the distance. And so you can see uh, this narrative is already starting to, uh, you know, fester. Here is another statement about what's going to happen next. So is this officer going to get charged with a crime? Who knows anymore, right? I don't think so. Shouldn't, in my opinion, but we'll see. This is uh, the chief of police now telling us what's going to happen next. Micaiah Bryant has been positively identified as the 16-year-old killed in this incident, and law enforcement has been in contact with her family. As I said last night, the important step now is for BCI to conduct a independent and transparent investigation. The Columbus Division of Police will assist them, but we will not interfere in any investigative process that they have. Our role is to provide them the information that they request and do so in a timely manner. We will not interfere. We will not provide input. We will allow them to conduct their investigation. At the conclusion of their investigation, that investigation is sent to the Franklin County Prosecutor's Office, where it will be presented to a Franklin County Grand Jury. And eventually, the packet will come to the Columbus Division of Police, and we will review that incident for policy compliance or violations. All right, so there's going to be a full investigation, as there should be, right? They're always, anytime somebody dies, like we should never just go back and say, well, look good to me. How about you, Lou? Yeah, John, that look good. All right, we'll wrap this up. Put a, you know, put a note. Did you note the file? Yeah, note, note the file. It, it deserves an investigation. It, it deserves a review. And I think that this officer is going to be completely cleared. Now, the media is doing what they can to sort of twist this story as we've already seen. And it's just, you know, it's the, it, it continues. Uh, take a look at what the New York Times did. So here's Ben Crump over on Twitter. And this was George Floyd's attorney, if you recall, the family's attorney. And he posted, says, as we breathe a collective sigh of relief today, a community in Columbus felt the sting of another police shooting as Columbus police killed an unarmed 15-year-old black girl named Micaiah Bryant. 
another child is lost, another hashtag justice for Micaiah Bryant, right? Which is obviously not accurate. He posted that three hours ago. She did not, uh, she, she was in fact armed and she was actually attacking another girl. So that's not accurate. Now, Contrite Bird said, holy S, look at what the New York Times did. They sanitized Crump's tweet by removing the unarmed lie. Keep in mind, the New York Times story comes after the footage is released and in fact references it just insanely dishonest. So the New York Times takes Ben Crump's story and says, as we breathe a collective sigh of release, uh, of relief, we felt the sting of another shooting. So they basically just clipped out this unarmed as we experienced another sting of police shooting. So, so they, they, uh, they just got rid of the unarmed part, right? Another child lost another hashtag. So they're covering, you know, they're covering for themselves. NAACP came out. Another black child was killed by, by the police. Our condolences to the family. Here is NAACP. They said, while many of us anxiously awaited the verdict of the George Floyd case, a black child was killed at the hands of law enforcement. Moments before the verdict, Micaiah Bryant was shot four times in the chest. She died shortly thereafter. The officer in the Floyd case was found guilty on all three counts. What should have been a momentary sigh of release, relief, it, but however, it resulted in further unrest in Columbus. Shortly after the events unfolded, NAACP president offered condolences. They viewed the body camera footage released to the public, and we have several unanswered questions. What threat did this 16-year-old girl pose to the police officer? Okay, this is an actual question in this document. The NAACP is asking, what threat did this 16-year-old girl pose to the police officer? What steps were taken to de-escalate the situation? Why wasn't a taser or pepper spray used? Finally, how does a call for help result in the death of a 16-year-old child? We demand answers and accountability for the death of Micaiah Bryant. That is the NAACP. That is a massive organization. Basically saying here, the cop should have let her stab the other girl, I guess, or pepper sprayed her. And do you see how fast that whole situation unfolded? Like in a matter of seconds, she pulls a gun out. She's in the middle of step. You saw the image. You saw the still, right? So he should have pepper sprayed her or tackled her or something. I mean, I guess, I guess that's an argument. Did he know she was 16 at the time? If he would have pepper sprayed her, do you think that that would have resulted in the cessation of the stabbing? I don't know. Could have. Let's take a look. We have Columbus Mayor Andrew Ginther. Let's see what he has to say. Did Micaiah Bryant need to die yesterday? How did we get here? This is a failure on part of our community. Some are guilty, but all of... Did Micaiah Bryant need to die yesterday? How did we get here? This is a failure on part of our community. Some are guilty, but all of us are responsible. Okay. All right. All of us are responsible for that. Some are guilty. Who, what is he talking? Is he saying that this cop is guilty for this thing? All right, here's Jen Psaki over at the White House. Michaela Bryant by the Columbus Police is tragic. She was a child. We're thinking of her friends and family and the communities that are hurting and grieving her loss. We know that police violence disproportionately impacts uh, black and Latino people in communities and that black women and girls, like black men and boys, experience higher rates of police violence. We also know that there are particular vulnerabilities that children in foster care, care like Micaiah, face. And her death came, as you noted, just as America was hopeful of a step forward after the traumatic and exhausting trial of Derek Chauvin and the verdict that was reached. So our focus is on um, working to address systemic racism and implicit, implicit bias head on, and of course, to passing laws and legislation that will put much needed reforms into place at police departments around the country. So yet again, this is about race, right? Racial injustice, racial inequity, whatever the heck she was talking about there uh, is going to be the centerpiece of this whole thing, right? Look, I am not in favor of a 16-year-old girl getting sh being shot and killed. What I am in favor of is not charging an officer with a crime or anybody with a crime that isn't a crime that they didn't deserve, right? And this officer 
was stopping a stabbing from happening in real time. It's just it's bizarre that this is coming out, that we're now asking questions about this. What if the officer didn't didn't shoot her and she got stabbed? Would they be OK with that? What if what if Makai is still here, but the other woman's dead because the officer you know pepper sprayed her or something or didn't react quickly? And why did they call the police in the first place? If they don't want an officer to come out there and, and, and stop a stabbing, then why did they call the police? If they want to have a knife fight, they want to just have a good old-fashioned knife fight in their neighborhood, why did several people call the police in the first place? We have some interesting reactions over on Twitter. We have defund and abolish the police, refund our communities. Uh, Bree Newsom says, teenagers have been having fights, including fights involving knives for eons. So I guess this one should have just uh, kept going. Um, I, I personally have never been in a night fight, even when I was a teenager, don't know anybody who was in a night fight, uh, didn't grow up in a particularly privileged, uh, middle school. I did go to a nice high school. There's no question about that. Uh, no knife fights there, but I, I hung out with mostly people from other high schools. So, uh, no knife fights there either. Have you ever been in a knife fight? You sort of, you know, throwing blades with people. I don't know what she's talking about. We do not need police to address these situations by showing up to the scene and using a weapon against one of the teenagers. So you do not need the police to show up. Well, then why'd they call them? Several people called. There were at least two 911 calls over there. So they called them. Y'all need help. I mean that sincerely. So apparently uh, this woman grew up where there's just knife fights going on all over the place. Uh, and uh, Valerie Jarrett is also weighing in on this. Remember her? She was part of the Obama team. Valerie Jarrett is an American businesswoman, former government official. She served as senior advisor to President Barack Obama, an assistant to the president for public engagement. Then she served as uh, the Obama Biden transition project chair, and she's the president of the Obama Foundation. Right. So this is a woman who is very high up in the power echelon, not as an elected person, but as an appointed person as part of the Obama Biden administration. She says a black teenage girl named Micaiah Bryant was killed because a police officer immediately decided to shoot her multiple times in order to break up a knife fight. Demand accountability and fight for justice. Just because an officer can use deadly force, she said, does not mean the officer should. Let's spend more time responsibly training them to de-escalate violent situations. And if force is required, use the minimum force necessary. Here's the ACLU now chiming in. She was 16 years old and had her entire life ahead of her. For the second time in less than a week, we are collectively mourning a child killed by the police. We'll say it again. A system that kills children with impunity cannot be reformed. Micaiah Bryant should still be alive today. That's from the ACLU. They're going to go after this cop. They're going to try to indict this guy or kill him. Here is LeBron James posted this to his 50 million followers, 49.6 million followers on Twitter said, uh, posted the picture of the officer, says, you're next. Hashtag accountability with the clock ticking, right? Like, we're going to come and get you, which is why I blocked his face out. If we have active threats now against uh, against anybody, I can't, I can't communicate that on this channel. No way. Doesn't matter who it is. So we have an active threat here from LeBron James. You're next. Hashtag accountability. Post his picture on the internet to 49.6 million followers. And uh, ultimately, he deleted it, so you'll see this, but not before it got 6,668 retweets, 4,362 quote retweets, 44,000 likes. So what that means to you, uh, non-Twitterers, is a lot of people saw this, okay? A lot. Many, many millions of people saw that. Uh, so that's LeBron James now. You're next coming after these these officers for stopping somebody who is in the middle of stabbing somebody else. And then we have uh, over on NBC News, MSNBC News, they are uh, also unhappy about this. Let's listen in and see how they're framing this entire conversation. Brian, when we talked earlier today, and I said, this doesn't make me happy, it's not satisfactory, it's not justice, this doesn't necessarily change unless there's some sort of radical reform in policing. And what happened 45 minutes later? The Kia Bryant, a 16-year-old girl in Columbus, Ohio, called the police for help. An officer was on the scene, and in 22 seconds, he shot her dead. An honor roll student who's making TikTok videos on makeup and hair. This hasn't stopped. 
And, and I, I want to be I want to be really clear about how critical this is, not just from the emotional standpoint, from the policy standpoint and from the national standpoint. There is nobody in America, nobody in America who was not paying attention to today's trial. All right. So he goes on and he says, everybody who's watching the show of trial, these cops, too. So they know what they are doing. You know, anytime they pull their gun, they know exactly what they're doing. And he wanted to kill that girl because she's a racist white cop. Right. This is where this is going. This, this, this cop is going to get, they're going to try to skewer this guy. And it was one of the, 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 the cleanest shoots that I have seen that we have covered here. She was in the motion. Like it was a split second shot. And uh, that other woman would have been, you saw the still. Oh my gosh. All right. Let's take a look at some questions over from our locals community which is the place to be watching the watchers.locals.com. If you want to support the show and ask a question first in is hack consulting says when I first saw the mother, I think she felt like she was winning the lottery, wanted to get some grifting cash. Yeah. Right. $27 million is a nice payday. You have a family that wants a piece of that. Oh, it makes me, it makes me sick to say that, but that's what it looked like, right? They were out there auditioning in front of the media. The media shows up. They're all running with this. This is a big production on the, on the back of a 16 year old girl who was stabbing somebody. Uh, LT 13 says, did you read that her aunt reported she was living in a foster home on that street? I also heard, I, I, I heard that I didn't confirm that, but yeah, I, I did read that. Also heard that Biden says she was in a foster system. Yeah. So the mom doesn't even raise her. The mom just wanted to, Oh yeah. You know, just go out there and get in front of the cameras. Pinky two says, is this just pushing shootings and even fake moving events to take all guns and getting our minds off of the real issues? You know, I'm not sure if, if it's anything that sort of masterminded, orchestrated, conspiratorial or whatever. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think I see where this is going. And, and, the, and the takeaway is that everything the cops do is essentially wrong, right? It's, they, they shouldn't show up. They shouldn't have even been there. And it's, it's really buttressing the defund the police movement. Because this cop showed up to do a cop thing. To, to stop a crime in progress. To save and preserve lives. You know, we have the defense of others in this country. There's a concept that says that you can use lethal force to defend somebody in, against lethal force. If, if somebody's going to kill somebody else, you can stop that person from committing that homicide, from committing that murder. Especially for cops. That's kind of one of their primary functions is to go stop bad people doing bad things. This cop didn't know she was 16. All he sees is a, is a woman attacking another woman with a knife. Draws, fires, and now he's going to get charged with a crime, potentially. Pinky2 says, I had seen this shooting. Mom makes daughter sound very sweet, but why was she yielding a knife and trying to stab the other woman? Police officer must take her out. Yeah, I mean, you, you have to, right? Bama Lickett says, Robert, that's the new trend now. Don't comply to the police, then claim injustice, then sue the state. Settle for millions. Wow, thank, thank you, taxpayer money. Liberty or Death says, that is why I cannot stand Crump. He is as bad, if not worse, than Al Sharpton. Absolute race hustler. Crump is seeing more dollar signs. I made $8.91 million off of Floyd. I wonder what I can get off of this girl. Yeah, didn't he work on... He's worked on a lot of these, right? So he just sort of... This is his business model. Just wait until somebody gets killed, then pontificate about it, and go out there and try to sign them up. And he's got a pretty good track record. Okay, if you are... If your daughter's killed... You want the lawyer that got the Floyd family, $27 million. Sharon Quidney says, polishing up my crystal ball here, my predictions, there will be riots until this officer is charged and convicted of murder. Next time a person of color, someone like George Floyd is arrested, there will be riots until he's acquitted and released. Right? It, it, you know, it's, it's a playbook. It is one strategy. And we can see that you can kind of do it without any recourse. National Populist says, I believe we need to know who the man that kicked down the person is before we can understand what really happened here. Regardless, stopping a stabbing is the job of police. No? Yeah, I, I, I thought it was. I thought. I mean, I could be mistaken. I don't know what they're supposed to do, but I, I think that is one of the primary functions. Sharon Quinney says, the cops should go on strike, quit, or just stand by and watch folks kill each other. See what happens. Of course, this is what the revolutionaries want. When there's total chaos, folks give up their rights to a totalitarian state just to have some kind of stability. Yeah, we saw, look, look what happened with COVID. Look what happened this last year. How much have ever, has everybody given up in exchange for not even anything, really? Just a, just a feeling. Like I'm doing the right thing. I'm saving lives because my government told me to. Because Dr. Fauci's out there saying, wrap your head around in cellophane like 45 times and you won't 
catch the coronavirus. You'll asphyxiate to death and be dead, but you'll at least you'll be socially distanced from everybody else in your coffin. We have Avi Furliger says there is currently a sit-in at Ohio State demanding they cut ties with Columbus PD. <laughs> Thankfully, the police chief is hinting they support the officer. They should, man. That, that you know that was look. That was that was the only thing that that officer could have done in my from my perspective. Norovirus says from a legal standpoint, if the officer waited for Bryant to actually stab the other person, then shoot Bryant, there would not be any question as to the legality of the shooting or just wait for one or two stabs just to make sure. (laughs) Just one or two. Yeah. Or like Joe Biden said, right? Just shoot him in the leg. Just shoot him in the leg. I don't want to shoot him in the leg because these people have no concept of of uh, real life physical interactions. That's why they, they have no idea. Just one or two stabs. Yeah, just let him stab. Can I shoot now? Maybe he should radio back in. Hey, I um, uh, we got a, uh, a stabbing in progress here. Dispatch, just calling for advice. Okay, we're on stab seven now. Need permission. Can I draw my gun and uh, take out this suspect here? Stabbing eight. That's 10 times now. Wait till she gets 15 there, Charlie. Well, we've got 15 stabs now. All right, you're now clear to fire. Uh, tremendous in the house says what possible reform could they enact that would have prevented this nothing 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 there's a woman stabbing another woman in the middle of the daylight broad daylight in the middle of columbus ohio since none of these idiots care to be specific about that maybe you could come up with some theories i know i can't there's uh uh don't don't call the police right don't call the police Uh, you know don't respond to these things really or uh, i don't know what the police could do just don't, don't show up I don't know what else they can do on these things. Justice first said, yes, uh, yesterday you see somewhat clinical. So I think I got that one, Justice. I think I asked, answered that one previously. Oh. Oh, um, did I, is this the one I was supposed to circle back on? Some tidbits of hope for our justice system. I, I don't, I don't have much for you. I'm sorry about that. You know, it, it's part of what I'm trying to do with this show is help to educate other people about some of these concepts like the presumption of innocence, like beyond a reasonable doubt. I think that as we start to see more of these things publicly sort of fleshed out, I am hopeful that more people will have conversations like this. We'll be a part of this show. We'll be a part of other conversations uh, and start analyzing these issues with a critical hat on because right now it feels to be very emotional. Now, I think the only offer of hope that I have at this moment is that we're in a pendulum, you know, right now. I talk about pendulums a lot. You know, they, they swing one direction and then the country sees where it's going. They don't like it. And then the pendulum swings back the other way. And I think we're sort of in one of these weird waves right now that I talk a lot about. You know, we're going through this wave where we have a weird culture that is that is like woke, super woke culture. And we have a, a lot of people who have these really big ideas like defund the police and, and things that, that sound good. It sort of reminds me of, you know, the 60s, like make love, not war, man. Like everything's peace and love and harmony. And that was just a phase that kind of came and went. And the reason why I think it went is because it doesn't work, right? That's not how real world is. That's not how reality functions. And so we're going to have a lot of people out there saying, well, defund the police and chauvin this and chauvin that, and the police shouldn't show up. And we're going to give the benefit of the doubt to every single person who is in a police interaction who is not a police officer, right? They all get the benefit of the doubt. There are going to be some very severe consequences to this. You're going to have less officers who become officers. You have, you're going to have people bail out of cities. You're going to have, you know, reorientations of different communities in this country, which is really what I think ultimately needs to happen. I've said this a long time here on the show. Local, I think, is better. And I like the idea of people being a little bit more mobile so that they can just kind of pick up and go to different areas where maybe they're better represented by their governments and their politicians. So if you're in a city that just wants to dump on the police at every turn, if you're in Minneapolis and they just convicted Chauvin, they're going to convict the three other officers who were there. They're probably going to convict Kim Potter, who's also you know very close by to that. They paid out $47 million by my count, $20 million to the Knorr case, another $27 million to the Floyd family. You've got now you know calls for defunding the police sort of you know bubbling up yet again. They tried that once already in Minneapolis. Didn't work out for them. They had to bring the money back and rehire some police. But, you know... The, 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 the people who are the engine of society who actually make things work, they're going to get tired of being dumped on 
at some point in time. I have the same concept with taxes, right? And if you want to tax all of the rich, right, we're going to punish the rich by taxing the rich. They don't care. They just leave. They just they just go somewhere else because they have the wherewithal, the mechanism to do that. They just take their money. They go to a different state. They you know form a new uh, business entity and they you know move money around and they figure it out. Law enforcement agency is going to do the same thing, right? Cops are going to do the same thing. They're going to say, ah, Minneapolis doesn't sound good. Where is a better law enforcement community? What is a better police agency to work for? What's a better environment? And you know, it's not going to happen overnight. It may take 10 years, but there will be a realignment. And then after that happens, we're going to see consequences. You're going to see an exodus. You're going to see a reorientation of our justice system from the people who sort of make it work, from the people who are the, the gears in the system. Right now, all of these criticisms are coming from people who are external to the system. You have people you know, like, like Nancy Pelosi and AOC talking about justice. To my knowledge, neither one of them are lawyers. They have no idea about any of this stuff. They sort of just use this as a political football. But that only goes so far. Eventually, the people who you rely on to actually run things, they're going to say, enough of this already. And when that happens, the pendulum is going to swing the other way because there will be more crime. There's going to be a lot more social unrest that will probably see these little no-go zones in certain big cities that, that police just say, well, good luck, right? You know, we, every time we go there, uh, you know, we, get, we get arrested or, or uh, you know, indicted in, in the court of public opinion about what we do to serve our own community. So we're not going to serve you anymore. You don't want us. We don't want you. Bye. And, you know, so we may have a period of darkness when we're all sort of wondering what our justice system looks like. And then what's going to happen? It's going to be even worse. Remember what happened in the 1990s? We had a big sort of, you know, crime wave that our politicians were uh, puffing up for everybody. And they passed a bunch of really draconian crime bills that we have to still live with. And so it's this cycle, right? Really increased hyper partisan enforcement. We have a weaponizing of the justice system, but people are going to see that and they're going to start clamoring for a new system. So I don't know ultimately what that looks like truly. I mean, if I can be candid about it, I've said this before previously, I like the idea of you know this, this concept of a network state and sort of creating these little uh, discontiguous uh, you know, zones where people sort of reorganize and pick up and move and say, we're just not, we're not going to put up with that crap anymore. We're going to go negotiate our own little, uh, you know, nation states that are network states that we just, we, we, we start from scratch, right? Cause rebuild up a, a system that actually functions because I'm not so sure that, that, that this is going to be functional for much longer. If we see this continue, this trend continue moving forward, if cops just you know, are automatically guilty in every interaction, that's not good, right? And, and that, that's going to cause some very serious ripple effects that we're all going to have to live with. And the people who are celebrating this right now, you know, their communities are going to be the hardest hit, unfortunately. It's not going to be the politicians in D.C. or the CNN anchors, wherever they're living, right? It's going to be the people in cities, in communities that have to deal with the absent police as a result of their own condemnation of them. It's going to be a problem. We have Norovira says special instructions for white people visiting. What is this? Welcome to George Floyd Square. This is where he took his last breath. Enter with reverence, care for each other. For white people in particular. Is this real? Nora. Decenter yourself. Come and listen. Be mindful of whether your volume, pace, and movement. Seek to contribute energy of the space. Consider if you want to need or take photos and post them. Do not take photos of other people without their consent. If your whiteness... If you whiteness white folks doing problematic things, speak up with compassion, take the burden off the black folks. And I, yeah, so so why would you even go, right? So let's say you want to go and pay homage to George Floyd. You have all these special rules. Uh, pass, pass on that. We have Ma Fox says, going to be a surprise coming from me most likely. Ma says, this is a quintessential use of deadly force for police. This is what the standard is should be to utilize deadly force, a very real and active threat that you have no other option but to shoot to stop it. It's a tragedy she was 16, but I would never expect the potential victims to be forced to wait until officers attempted to exhaust other options while they're being actively stabbed to try something else. Robert, this was the correct call, and I hope the officer can deal with having to do this, with having had to do this in his line of work. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people are considering the the 16 year old, you make a great point, Ma, a lot of people are really focused on uh, Micaiah, right? She's dead, she's a 16 year old girl, she got shot and killed. Terrible, I don't condone that at all. But what about the woman who was gonna be stabbed? Should we have had more conversations about that? I'm, I'm gonna guess she's pretty thrilled that this officer saved her life, right? And knife stabbings are not a joke, okay? It's not like the movies. 
You know, knives are extremely, extremely lethal. They will kill you quickly. And that was a big one. It wasn't a Swiss Army knife or something like that, right? That was a big metal blade. Officer saved a woman's life, and he's going to be charged with a crime for that? He's got all these people screaming for his head. He's got LeBron James saying, you're next, buddy. What? Yeah, you're right, Mom. This was the right call. You're right. Pat myself on the back right there. Thank you, Mom. All right. 